The Equal Rights Amendment, the ERA, was first introduced in Congress in 1923. It was passed on to the states by Congress in 1972, incidentally the year I was born. This goes back a long way. But it wasn't ratified by the required three-fourths of the states before its expiration. In 1983, the ERA was reintroduced, as it had to be, following its failure to be ratified before the congressionally set deadline, not arbitrary, made by vote of the, of the elected, duly re elected representatives of the people. It was a deadline that was explicitly relied upon by the states. And it was the subject of five hearings in the House Subcommittee on Civil and Constitutional Rights, including one hearing called by the minority. It was last debated and marked up in the House Judiciary Committee here on November 9, 1983. The ERA subsequently failed to pass the House of Representatives by the required two-thirds vote. If the ERA is ever to become part of the Constitution, the process has to start all over again, with a new introduction in Congress, a new issuing out of the uh, amendment to the states with a two-thirds vote of each House, and ratification of that new amendment by three-quarters of the states. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg has been quoted a lot here this morning already. She was a prominent supporter of the ERA at, at its inception, of course, and it may still be her dream that it be enacted. But she said publicly in September of this year, gathering at Georgetown University in her speech, she said, quote, I hope someday we'll be able to start over again on the ERA, collecting the necessary states to ratify it, unquote. So it's clear the ERA will have to be passed again by Congress and the states under the Constitution's supermajority requirements before it becomes part of the Constitution. As a result, this effort to retroactively erase the original deadline relied upon by the states during the previous ratification debates is just patently unconstitutional. Beyond that, the ERA itself should not become part of the Constitution for a lot of reasons. You've heard some of them summarized here this morning, but one that is at the top of our list of concerns is that the bipartisan Hyde Amendment prohibits the use of federal funds for abortions except in cases of rape, incest, or when the life of the mother is endangered. And we think the Hyde Amendment would be greatly jeopardized by the passage of the ERA. It's not just us. The Supreme Court upheld the Hyde Amendment's abortion funding restrictions as constitutional in Harris v. McRae, but the people's right to protect the unborn would be eliminated under the ERA. Back in the early 1980s, our colleague, Representative Sensenbrenner, requested that Congress's independent research arm, the Congressional Research Service, provide the committee with its own evaluation of that question. As he said at the 1983 markup of the ERA, quote, the executive summary of the CRS report says that under strict scrutiny, the pregnancy classification in the Hyde Amendment would probably be regarded to be a sex classification under the ERA, meaning that under the ERA, restrictions on abortion would be struck down. Today, however, with the benefit of more recent history, we can see that the concerns of Representative Sensenbrenner in 1983 were fully justified. Five years later, in 1988, the Colorado Supreme Court held that Colorado's ERA in its state constitution prohibits discrimination on the basis of pregnancy. Ten years later, in 98, the Supreme Court of New Mexico took the next step and relied on New Mexico's state-level ERA to strike down a state regulation restricting state funding of abortions for Medicaid-eligible women. Th th those cases made clear what the advocates of the ERA, or at least many of them, actually support. Recently, the NARAL, Pro-Choice America, in a March 13th, 2019 national alert that went out all over the internet, <clears throat> admitted their belief that the Equal Rights Amendment would, quote, reinforce the constitutional right to abortion. It would require judges to strike down anti-abortion laws, unquote. 